you know, riding around with P a lot, you know, because when I got to Oakland, I would drive. He, he, I learned my way, and he would, you know, I would always drive him. And, you know, a lot of young dudes be like, sir, if you just work, bro, you don't get no sleep. And I'm like, you don't understand who was with me, you know, who I was with, you know. And I would watch this dude, man. We'd be going from studio to studio, then, you know, going from music place to music place to, you know, to like 4 in the morning. I'd drop him off. he lay back on the bed. He'd tell me, come back at 7. i come back at 7. He in that same spot, and he'd get up, go brush his teeth, switch his shirt, and we gone again. And it was just those times riding with him and the things he taught me and the things about life, man. You know, that was some of my fondest memories. Um, watching him do Ghetto D. When he was doing Ghetto D, man, I'm talking about focus and knew that that album was going to be that album that will open up us doing from 500 to a million to two to three million, you know, and it ended up doing, what, four or five million. And watching him do that, man, and never wrote a, a verse you know, that process, um, you know, I think, you know, for a lot of people, they think about the parties. We, you know, we didn't really go to parties, man. We was about business. We was businessmen. Um, you know, I think, you know, just some of the walking up and, and meeting, you know, Eminem at that time, and he knew who we were, and, and you know, and P, when they met with Michael Jackson, that was a fond memory, you know, of him knowing of No Limit, you know, and of P, you know what I'm saying? I mean, things like that, man. And and it was more the camaraderie, man, Um, you know. And, and I think when when Ghetto D came out, you know, number one like that, man, and the numbers that it did, that was like a time where we realized, and that was like a great time, you know, because I saw P, P joked and clowned a lot behind closed doors, but he was always serious. And that was, like, one of the first times I watched him, like, happy and, like, overwhelmed, you know, and he walked around with envelopes and giving us, like, checks, like, yo, man, thank you. You know, and, you know, those times like that yeah. when that album came out and, you know, and watching Mia, who went through a lot, you know, it was like every time she started an album, you know, I, I found a great respect. I used to aggravate her sometimes where she just hated me. You know what I'm saying? But she knew I was always there. She was always there for me. But, you know, you know, not hate like we had a beef, never. You know what I'm saying? But I'm telling you, I was just aggravate her. You know what I'm saying? And But watch her go in studio, man, curl us in her hair, cook for us, and then go in there and do her album. And somebody was always passing or leaving this world that was close to her when she was doing the albums, man. And you remember those times because we was family. You know, I don't think it'd ever be a label like that because so many artists are for themselves, and, you know, we we right. were more of a family, you know, where it was like he didn't have to put people on, make them say, uh, you know, and that was actually a beat of mine, you know what I'm saying? And he was like, oh, serve album done, and, you know, and it was, you know, and, and he, he could have did that by himself. He turned around, who won't get on it? We was we was a family, man. I think it was, it's hard to pinpoint one thing, I think, it was just the things together and see murder man who you know, the world look at him as C and making moves with thugs and fuck them other niggas. But the dude was the funniest dude, man. Just the things me and him would do, you know, to people, you know what I'm saying? P would stay fussing at us, man. Cause we, we did all types of stuff, man. Tiny Lister, we made him go from being Debo to standing up in the middle of the wall, like help him, help him. Cause we played a joke, you know, different things like that, man. And, and watching Snoop, one of my idols that was on my wall, a picture on my wall. I used to have pictures of certain rappers that one day I'm going to get there. They're going to know my name. And to watch him come up and know my name, you know, to watch a Skullface say my name, watch a, a LL know my name, you know you, you know what I'm saying? And and those things came from in our family. We was, we was a very close label, man. I mean, everybody, you know, you either knew somebody, but if not, it still was, it was family. So I can't really pinpoint, like, but I just remember Ghetto D when we, when he, when they shipped out and it made number one and he had, we had a private meeting and he walked around giving envelopes saying, thank you. Like personally, like, thank you, bro. Appreciate you. You know, and not like he never said thank you. Cause he showed his gratitude always, you know what I'm saying? But it was like, you could see like this album meant it wasn't just a hustle to him. Because a lot of everything else, Ice Cream Man was a hustle. He was hustling, you know, and he told us to hustle along with him. But 
Ghetto D was something he really took serious, like just that one that's going to open the door, and it really opened the door for a lot of us. Everybody will talk about Ice Cream Man. You know, that was that one that people noticed, but... See Murder and Mac, you know what I'm saying? These guys are uh-huh. uh, real humble dudes. They've been, uh, they've been locked down for several years. Um, do, you, uh, do you stay in contact with them at all, or is there any word about of them getting out? I heard Mac might be getting out, but I, I don't know about See Murder. I get messages from people. I get, I, you know, I don't, I, I, I just don't know what's going on there. I, when when Mac went in jail, I knew Mac long before I came to No Limit. We were at, a, at, a, at a, another label when he was rapping with Mac, uh, rapping with Storm, and it was Mac and Storm. So I've been knowing Mac for just a little while, maybe five years before the tank, maybe three years before the tank. And I just couldn't, when he went in, it's just I couldn't shake that. For a long time, it was messing with me. I haven't spoken. I spoke to Mac maybe twice, maybe three times. Me, it was me, Mac, and KLC on the phone, and we talked a few times. I, I told him I still I have a lot of old Mac music that nobody don't really have on in my files that we did together. Uh, oh, wow. I haven't spoken to C Murder. Oh, wow. Yeah, I haven't spoken to C Murder in a long time. I, uh, uh, but he has a he has a guy that works with him. Uh, and we've spoken, so, you know, I'm like this. If I'm asked to make something for C-Murder, I make it. If I'm asked to make something for Mac, I make it. For those for, the, for for those people, for a lot of yeah. them, you got it. Just call me and let me know. It pains me that they're in there like that because I've hung around both of those guys. It's just to know that they're locked up like that. I don't handle that well, um, you know, to think about all that talent and actually good people that's just, I don't know. You know, I don't know all the specifics. I don't follow the story. I don't know new evidence. I don't know any of that. It just bothers me that they're locked up. Yeah, real talk, man. Real talk. Yeah. Uh, but you, yeah. you said something, though, I, w- I want to go back to real quick. Uh, you um, said you got some un- unreleased Mac music. Um, <laughs> uh, what, what, what era is this from? Is this from before the No Limit days or during the No Limit days? Yeah. This is this is before No Limit. Me and Mac had I got a beat that me and Mac did together. And yeah, he we he got on the beat and I got on the keys and we we did something together and then I got a few other tracks and I was talking to him on the phone that one time and I was I was like, Yo man, you remember this, you remember that? He was like, You have all of that? I was like, Yeah, I'm not I'm not letting that go anywhere. You know, I'm just waiting on you. So, you know, maybe one day maybe the rest of the world will hear it. Mac yeah. Mac is a lyrical beast, has been since the day I met him. And yeah. that was back when he was about 17, I think, when I met him. You know, he was a pizza-eating rap um, MC, and he was a fool back then. You, you, I mean, if, if, if you look around now, you got P going around doing shows and, and uh, doing different venues and, and putting out music. Has he reached out to you at all <laughs> to do any music? I, I wouldn't even know. I haven't talked to that cast in 1999. I'm, I'm all about F.E. F.E. Mm-hmm. is customer's management. I'm, you know, so I'm working with what exists and what the kids are into, you know, my own brand. You know what I'm saying? You know, that was then. This is now, you know? So, okay, I get you. I get you. Yeah, damn. I, I didn't know it was like that. I didn't know y'all ain't talked that long. But I know you you keep in not, touch with motherfuckers like, like Mr. Servon like and stuff it's, like that. It's not like that. It's just like uh, somebody move out of town, you know. Sometimes it's just out of sight, out of mind, you know. Yeah. The dude, you know, this dude is out somewhere still talking negative about me. You know what I'm saying? I haven't put one one piece of air out in the in the public a negative about this man. You know what I'm saying? And he keep my name in his mouth on something negative. I find that to be strange. You know what I'm saying? To know that you know we already been moved forward about our business, about our lives. You know what I'm saying? You know, from the bottom of my heart. I want to say we need to get C. Murder, Corey Miller back on the streets. We need to get yeah, the yeah. back on the streets. That's where my heart is. You know what I'm saying? When you ask me about No Limit, that's the first thing I think about. I don't think about music. I don't think about scoring. I think about Corey Miller being incarcerated, you know what I'm saying, for something that he didn't do. I think Hello. about McKenna Phipps, Mac Adon being uh, uh, incarcerated for something that he didn't do. You know what I'm saying? I'm mm-hmm. not on TV every day. I'm not all on the newspapers. I'm not on all these you know, uh, all over the radio every day because I, because of my beliefs, you know what I'm saying, because of how I am, because of how real I am. I'm not scared of nothing, 
You feel me? Yeah. I speak my mind. You feel me? I'm underground for a reason, by choice. You know what I'm saying? You know, if I had the voice to be on TV every day, that's what all what you would hear from me. You don't hear nobody saying that unless it's something they can sell a record on. You feel me? So you, you still you still uh, you still work with a lot of the uh, guys from the old old No Limit days, don't you? Yeah, it's like everybody's everybody's out doing their thing, but you know if they come for me for something, I'm there. You know, it's just that simple. Because people don't understand, like everybody, you know, on No Limit was always based a family type situation. Because you gotta understand, like with me, it like basically everybody on No Limit that was out that that was that was major. Was my artist first, like Soldier Slim, Serve on Mystical Hound, you know what I'm saying? Who I met, Soldier Slim, Serve on Mystical Hound, Full Blooded, you know, and you know I bought Mac and Fina, and um, you know, shit, I had all them, you know, cause shit, when I came to No Limit, shit, I, I, you know, I just didn't have the finances to do what I do. It was just T R U and P. Still. So, so you and brought a whole in, bunch of shit to the table. Yeah, it's basically when I came there, I brought all my artists with me. Wow. I didn't bring them at the same time because, you know, Slim and Hound, full-blooded, it was always in and out of jail, so I really couldn't get them when I came in, you know what I'm saying? So, so as they got loose one by one, shit, I started pulling them in. You know, because I remember when I first, I, when I when, when I first started fucking with Pete, I bet yeah, when I went up there, because Servon went up there and Servon told Pete, look, um, I'm not coming if my producer can't come. You know, and Pete was like, fuck it, bring him. You know what I'm saying? And um, that was the only way Sir was going to go. So me and Mia took a flight up there, and, you know, I didn't have no idea... Because I've never been to L.A. I've never been to California or the West Coast, period. So I basically just went on that trip just to, you know, see the West Coast. So, you know, I've seen Pete doing this thing, but I never did commit it. But, you know, shit, he, like, when I when we got up there, this nigga had jackets and all of that shit made. Because Pete really didn't know no artists from the city, you know. Pete came down and was signing. He was going to sign any motherfucker he, he, who came to him. But it's just the fact when he came by me, I just had a stable of artists already. He went to Peaches and, you know, found me. You know, when Sir bought me in, I bought in everybody else. So, so pretty much, uh, uh, you guys, you guys were the centerpieces of the, of, of the label. Yeah, pretty much. You know, you know, don't, don't get me wrong. Like, I'm not gonna say Pete didn't do his thing, but when it come down to where these artists came from. It was all mine first, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, you know, serve on, show the slim, mystical, you know what I'm saying? Um, full blooded, Mac, fiend, you know, because all them niggas, we like, my house was the, like the, the um, my basement studio was just like the, the hub for everybody that was uptown. Any nigga that rapped that had success from New Orleans stepped foot in my basement. And, like they had to come there. Mm. You know, because I was the only motherfucker that that, that had his own label, was a, was a top DJ, and then had all of the sound. Because, you know, I used to do sound for artists and um and all of that shit, too. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, sound for concerts. And everybody like I'm the like I'm the baby from that era. You know what I'm saying? So. Uh, so, yeah, I, I was the first one to. Uh, bring a gold plaque uh back to the city in terms of of uh rap music you know at that time and uh you know and that was that was the start of it right there man i mean we was on like it was, it was cracking right there and for those that don't know you know we did the song uh r.i.p uh which is on uh, i don't know this one or this two i can't remember but i was uh what the third i was second no i was third i can't remember i was third i think on there and we did and our, our if you remember on the inside of the cover it has ccg coming soon we did an album called 100 percent game and uh it was me and my partner cisco but you know the, the situation <clears throat> excuse me had got a little funky you know and that, that's the thing a lot of people don't know is what happened was you know, P. It flew us out to Oakland, you know, and I mean, man, that was big for us, bro. Like, we hadn't, you know what I'm saying? We hadn't win any, you know, 
what you know, I mean, we from Kansas City, you know what I'm saying? So that was big for us. Like he sent us tickets, brought us out there, man. We had never done anything like that in the music, you know. So we young guys with, you know, big dreams and different things like that. So you know, he had us in the studio with Al Eaton and, and K. Lou, and these were big guys at the time. You know what I mean? These were guys that we were seeing on the back of two shorts tapes. You know what I'm saying? So uh, uh, he got us in the studio. So we were just initially going out there just to do the Down South Hustles because at the time, Bone had came out. You know what I mean? Uh, thuggish, ruggish bone had had blew up, so that kind of you know, I mean, it put us in that line to where P was like, oh shit, this is my version of Bone Thugs and Harmony, you know what I mean? So uh, we had came, we had did that, but it was some internal shit that kind of happened, man. Uh, that sidelined us a little bit, and, and what that was was, you know, just it, my partner that I rap with, man. Him and P just kind of didn't get along. They just didn't, and, and part of that was because me and P had established a relationship uh, prior to us going out there. Like, me and P, I, I made contact. Like, he knew me. Like, we talked for months before we even went to Oakland. So me and him had established a relationship. Him and my guy, they never talked. They didn't even know each other. They was like strangers, you know what I mean? So uh, at the time, we had a manager, uh, and he didn't know what he was doing either. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and we were kids, so understand, we 17, 18 you know, with these, you know, adult life decisions with no reference point, you know, so we kind of got to figure it out as we go along, you know what I'm saying? You know, so uh, uh, the manager that we had at the time, you know, he didn't know what the fuck he was doing, you know, he was from New Jersey and shit, he knew more than us, but he didn't know what the fuck he was doing, period, you know what I mean? So uh. the the funny thing about that dynamic is me and P got along really well, I mean, we hit it off off the off the rip, you know, he was like a big brother, but I never really got along with our manager at the time. But my partner, him and our manager, like they clicked. You see, so it was it was, so it, you see it was kind of these um, antagonizing kind of a uh, uh, little undercurrents going on. And so uh, when we got out to Oakland, we did the uh, the you know P was like fuck it, let's do an album. I was like cool, let's do it. You know what I'm saying? So our manager, you know, he was hitting P like. Man, so what's up on the paperwork? What's up with the points? What's up with the bill? What's a woo and all this old dumb shit, right? So, you know, P was kind of like, you know, I mean, he he just starting out. He like, man, you know, these guys, ain't nobody checking for these guys. Like, I'm giving them an opportunity. Like, let's see what happened. I mean, we, you know, let's see what happened, and then we'll go from there. So I can remember, you know, I'm 17, man, again, common sense. And just, you know, my mind frame was like, okay, it ain't like we got a bid in war right now. It ain't like we got a bunch of labels checking for us at the point, you know, at this moment. I said we popular back home a little bit, but you know what I'm saying? That 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 ain't shit, you know, not where we trying to get to, you know what I'm saying? So I said, well, fuck it. My exact words was like, let's go ahead and do it, you know what I'm saying? And and, and once the shit blow up, if the shit do what it's supposed to do, then we make ourselves viable. You know, then, you know, shit, he got to, you know, make it right with us and do what we got to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, I thought like a hustler because that's really what I was doing. You know what I mean? So, uh, uh, but my manager, you know, he didn't take it like that. Like, he was, like, pushing P like he was a major. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, we want this much advancement. We want this. We want that. You know, you would have thought that we we came in and had already sold 100, 200,000 records. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, it, it, you know, it put me in a precarious position at that time because, you know, it was like, fuck. It was like, damn, you know, I can remember P like, man, you know, you my nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm vibing with you, but the the, the, the baggage and shit that you coming with, like, that shit is complicating shit, you know. But, again, at 17, you know, I'm like, well, shit, I came with my guy. Like, you know, it got to be both of us or nothing, you know what I mean? <laughs> So P respected that. He was like, you know, I respect that, man. You know, so what happened was we went back to Kansas City, and that's where you see me start grinding out independently. But me and P always kept a relationship.